we've spoken a little bit about stock picking on the long side. How does your approach differ on the short side? What are you looking for there? You know, the, to some degree, I'd start with and say that it, it is, it, it, you can first think of it as sort of the opposite of long. You know, I mentioned dominating positions and growing markets. Well, if a company is losing its dominating position or its market is, is going X growth, um, you know, those are good places to start in terms of, of you know, looking at uh, at the short side. Um, you know, I think we're, uh, you know, I would say that there's, a, you know, so many lessons learned from short selling over, over 20 years. And I think when we first came to this business of running a hedge fund, it was like, oh, sure, you know, you can't short sell. You're not going to know how to short sell. Um, and certainly, you know, I think, well, we're always learning in this business. And so, um, you know, but certainly we, we learned some fast lessons, you know, within shorting. And, and then there's been sort of ongoing lessons within shorting. But I would say, you know, whereas valuation is important to us on the long side, it's pretty far down the list on the short side. It's not something that we start with. Um, matter of fact, ironically, some of the best places to look for shorts is the cheapest highest yielding stocks you'll find. And you have to say, well, why would you start there? I mean, it's usually there's a signal that there's a problem, you know, that sometimes it's cheap for a reason. And, you know, whereas I think that some people might, you know, it's, it's understandable why you'd look at expensive stocks to, to, to potentially short. Uh, I say, been there, done that, you know, it doesn't, at least for us, it didn't work that well. <laughs> you know? um, it, it's it's not a bad thing if you have all the other things stars aligned and it's expensive. Then you know that's a, that's a good thing. But um, but we definitely don't start with that. And like I say, I, almost the opposite. We look for cheap stocks to short, which would sound silly, but um, but it could be a sign of stress. Um, you know, risk management is also you know very different. Um, you risk manage naturally as a long investor. You know, I, I say. A good stock that works gets bigger. A stock that fails you gets smaller um, by its nature. On the short side, when you're wrong, they get bigger. Um, and uh, and so you're you have to risk manage you know differently on the short side. And also you know when you get one right on the short side, for example, there's there's a whole host of behavioral aspects to uh, to investing generally, obviously. But I think even you know more uh, mind torture goes on on the short side. And and um, you know oftentimes you're in this battle with a short. You know, you, you maybe have spent a very long period of time and, and done a lot of work and finally your ship comes in and you've got a, a 1% position that goes down 20% because, hey, they missed earnings or something bad happened and your thesis is finally getting recognized. Um, you know, it's human nature to just almost say like, oh, thank God, you know, like I'm out of here, you know, or, or, or to not add to that position. You know, I mean, really when you get it right, and again, this is sort of lessons learned after years, now, now you're, now it's going the right direction. You know, people are beginning to recognize and maybe see what what you've seen all along. You've got to power in. You know, you've got to take you know what was hopefully a small short position that was a battleground for for a period of time, and and now make it real. You know, which for us is still a relatively small position, but you know maybe a one to two percent type position where we have high conviction. Um, whereas we you know we do position size significantly larger on on the long side. So. Um, you know, but we look for the same things. It's it's competitive threats. It's uh, it's frauds and fads. It's uh, it's you know secular. We call them melting ice cubes. Um, you know, but we've done a lot over the years to kind of like improve our process and take those lessons learned and, and try to get get better at uh, at short selling. And I think the other thing, you know, you talked about advantages we have early, and, and um, you know, I think. Where do you find the frauds in the world? You know, where do you find the bad actors in the world? It's not typically at, you know, 3M or, or you know, name your large cap, high quality, you know, good, generally good business. It's usually in these small businesses. You know, there's a lot of flaky characters. There's a lot of bad actors, um, but they're $200 million companies or $300 million companies. These pump and dumps, you know, these you've seen all the fraud in China and, and places like that. Um, it, you know, again, those things don't really move the needle for a lot of other funds. They don't even really bother to look. Uh, but for us, again, we, we can look at some really small companies. And so, 
um, you know, that, that, uh, that I think that plays to our advantage as well. It sounds like the, the niche that you occupy uh, just helps you to avoid a bit of that competition from larger institutional investors. You sort of occupy a space just beneath where they're forced to invest by a sheer dint of the assets that they manage. And so you've, you've almost got first pick of what happens beneath that. Yeah, I mean that's the idea, right? Especially, I mean, the the magic happens in small cap when you know you get a good compounding business, and and then eventually the re-rating comes. Um, and that when it's compounding and it's cheap, and then you know you get discovery. Uh, that's where you get you know the, the quote unquote multi baggers. And so, um, yeah, that's the other you know virtue. Of course, you have to, you know. It, small cap is not easy and you have to be pragmatic and you're, they're not all going to be the next Apple. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. almost none of them are going to be the next Apple. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 it's hard work, but when they do come in, you know, you can, you can definitely, uh, you know, get one or two ideas which you can make up for a lot of, a lot of mistakes. Uh, are your shorts usually paired with a long or are they standalone positions? And they're really standalone positions. I mean, there have been a few cases where we've had genuine winners and losers, and so we, you know, we're going to buy the winner and sell the loser. But um, we're looking to make money, uh, not just hedge. Um, and uh, we want you know idiosyncratic ideas that that stand on their own. Um, you know, we will if we have a lot of, you know, I, and, and really that's also a lesson learned. I mean, it, when we, I think when we were young, we would. You know, maybe force a short if we had a lot of great ideas in Korea, but we didn't want a lot of Korea exposure. You know, we'd look for things on the short side. You know, again, we were looking for fundamental shorts, but I suppose we compromised on our, our principles somewhat to kind of force something that uh, was not necessarily optimal. Uh, today, you know, we just learned to manage that through the long side. Uh, if we can't find, you know, if we're not comfortable with Korea risk or, or what have you, um, we just won't. You know, we may have a great idea, and we maybe in a, in a normal circumstance would have a much bigger long position, uh, but because of that Korea risk, you know, we'll just dial that down and, and not have as much. If we can't find, you know, good high quality shorts in Korea uh, that that stand on their own, uh, we'll just manage that Korea risk through the long side. Podcast is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute financial advice or take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs of individual listeners. Listeners should consider whether any opinions or recommendations in this podcast are suitable for their particular circumstances and, if appropriate, seek professional advice, including tax advice.